Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we will be doing a Q&A because we just hit 1,500 subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing if you did. And without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Now for our first question, we have, are you going to quit YouTube by the way? Please don't. Um, I'm not sure where you got this idea from, but I have no intentions of quitting YouTube anytime soon. Um, I think the Ant community is honestly thriving really well right now, and there's a lot of new Ant Keepers actually hitting the scene, and I think it's great. So honestly, no, I'm not planning on quitting YouTube, and I will still be uploading every week. On to the next question. And for our next question, we have, what is your favorite species of ant? Now, this question really made me think. After a while, I decided that Campanatus has to be my favorite. Now, many people around the world have different opinions and Campanatus is usually referred to as a beginner species. And that is true, but I find that because Campanatus has one of the largest species diversity, there's just so many different kinds to see. Taking a look at this Campanatus festinatus queen on Enderant's Instagram, it shows that carpenter ants come in all different varieties. The light color really makes her pop as well. If you want to check out more of these ants, check Enderant's official Instagram in the description. Now let's continue. Now the next question is, uh, with language speak you. Hmm. Okay, now if this question confused you as well, don't worry. I reached out to the guy through DMs and asked him, and he confirmed that he was only trying to ask me what language I speak. But I thought it was a pretty funny question. Yes, I speak English, and I don't speak anything else but English. Um, I know one thing in Spanish, and that is... No hablo espanol, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, which basically means I don't speak Spanish in Spanish. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, on to the next question. Next up we have, can you do a video where you just show us your whole collection? Yeah, I do plan on doing this before hibernation, and it will be a big one, so I'm excited. I have tons of colonies and founding queens in test tubes, and I'm so excited to show you guys. This video will definitely be happening before hibernation, as well as a hibernation video that will probably be coming after that. There's a few other videos that I do want to get out of the way before that happens, but I'm hoping, if I'm lucky, a 2000 subscriber special will land before this winter. Now that is a huge gap between here and then, as it is 500 subs, and I'm not entirely sure if I'll hit that in that time, but I feel like if I grind and do push out a video every week, maybe I will hit 2000 before hibernation. That would be awesome. If I don't, I'll still be doing that vid anyway. I'm just saying that that'll be a really good way for me to make it a special as I'll be showing everything. As I haven't actually featured every colony in one video to give you guys a really good like visual on what I have in quite a while. So yes, definitely in the future. Next question. Now for our next question, how long have you been ant keeping? Now this one actually made me think a lot harder than I thought I needed to, but thinking back, I remember watching an Ants Canada video around October, September, so basically around this time, and I immediately went out and tried to catch a queen ant, and ended up finding one, but then it died, and I never actually got an idea on that because I only think I posted one picture and it was really horrible, so going back myself now, I don't even know what it was, but that was four years ago. That is how long it has been. And I only started my YouTube around two years ago in 2017. So it's been quite a while now. It was interesting to think back and realize just how long it's actually been. Anyway, let's go to our next question. Now, our next question is, how many ant colonies do you have? Currently, I have 6 colonies in formicariums without worlds, 21 colonies inside test tubes, and 14 founding queens. Whew. Now you just know how big my featuring all of my colonies video is going to be. I'm kind of excited, but not so excited about my editing time I'm going to be spending on that. But regardless, it'll be a really cool video, and it'll be awesome. So, next question. Now our next question is, what was your first species? Now, this kind of was already answered, but I'll say it one more time. I originally caught a queen that I believe now was Laceus of some sort, but I'm not too sure. 
This was almost four years ago, and the picture that I ended up taking of it was extremely horrible. It was through a different camera, and it was the picture of the screen. So it was really pixely. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just tried to zoom in with my phone or take a video so that it would be easier. But that was four years ago, and I wasn't nearly as experienced as I am today. So I guess that kind of answers it as I'm still not entirely sure, but it was definitely some sort of laceus. On to the next question. Now for this question, I can't fully answer it, and that's because I don't want to spoil any upcoming videos. But the question is, how many species have you kept in total? In total, I've kept 22 different species. I'm not sure if that number is exactly correct, but that is pretty close. Also, listing every possible species I've kept down to the genus is kind of what I've done here, but I do want to get this video out before its upload date, so I'm not going to go through listing every single one. Maybe in the future I will go through that, but in featuring all of our colonies, that is basically what will happen to a certain extent. Caponatus, let's say, if I'm keeping a whole bunch of them, I probably won't go through every colony, I'll probably show them in groups. Next question. What is your favorite native species, and what is your favorite exotic species? For my favorite native species, I have to say Formica Bradley. Because of its rarity, and because it lives so close to me, these guys are amazing, especially since I'm studying a whole bunch of new stuff about them, and not very much has been researched on them. If you want to see a video on these guys, click the i card here. Okay. Now, what is my favorite exotic species? My favorite exotic species has to be any Fadoli species. Honestly, they're just some of the coolest things ever. Because they're so tiny, and because the majors have such big heads, even at a small size. Now, I know that there is one species that lives in Canada, but it's extremely rare to find, so I doubt I'll be getting them anytime soon. Anyway, that wraps up that question. Next question. Now for our next question, we have any tips for Fidole species? And going along with the last question, I don't know. Never kept them before, but I really want to. Unfortunately, I can't give you any tips, but I would say that Fidoli probably follow similar routines to most other queens, keeping them in a test tube setup, figuring out their humidity level, and heat distribution. Once you have that wrapped down, they're sure to succeed anyway. Next question. LOL. Next question. Now, the rest of these questions were asked through a YouTube community post, so I won't be putting them on screen, but you can still find them if you go there. Our first question is, how do you deal with mold? Now, I've actually covered this topic in the past. If you want to check that video out, click here. Now, how do I deal with mold? Well, I simply move them out. And then after that, I take the test tubes, I wash them out really well with hot water and soap, and then... I let them dry for about 10 hours before I use them again, or set them aside until I do need them. In case you have a really bad mold outbreak and you're in some sort of situation where it's during hibernation, try to do it before hibernation. Even if you see the slightest bit of mold, do it then, because it's better than going 6 months in a moldy test tube and risk them dying, because you would not want that. Mold can still grow in that temperature, and it might get even worse, and they can't do anything about it because they're sleeping and waking them up during hibernation usually isn't healthy for them. So, do it before, and if it's not winter, check out this video. And if it's not winter, go check out that video. Next question. Now this next question actually made me think about it. Should you keep watering your nests while they're in hibernation? Now I actually asked around about this question because I wasn't too sure. All the previous years, I haven't had colonies in formicariums and outworlds that I needed to really water them in. They've always just been in test tubes. So I asked around, and it seems that this is the answer. Depending on the species will depend on how much you need to hydrate them. If you have something like Camponatus, you won't really need to hydrate them. But something like Myrmica, which usually likes higher humidity, you would. Now this may be wrong as I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on this but this is the best answer that I've gotten so far. Next question. And for our final question, what available items can you use in exchange for test tubes in housing queen ants? Now, there's a lot of different things you can do. Founding formicaria is one of the most obvious things, which can be found from a lot of different ant stores. 
which can usually only house the first generation or two of workers before they usually need to move out. But something more simple than that would be literally just a container with a hole poked in the top for ventilation. And if you make this bigger, you can shove a piece of cotton down and then ensure that there won't be anything getting out. Then inside that container, you could just put a little piece of cotton that's slightly damp. You would have to check up on them. I find that test tubes are still pretty cheap and provide probably the best housing space for a founding queen. But if you don't have them or you can't afford them and you have a container, I guess that would be the next best alternative. Another alternative would be a dirt setup. I usually suggest raising them in test tubes as th that way you can provide them with better heating as well. Well, that concludes this 1.5K Q&A session. Thank you everybody who submitted their answer on my Instagram poll. And if you're not already following my Instagram, it'll be the top link in the description. Go follow me. I hope you enjoyed today's video and there'll be another one next week at 10 a.m. Make sure the notice are on and the like button is blue. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.